we begin with a short axis view from the posterior. The segmentation of the right atrium and inferior vena cava are shown. The bottom of the right atrium is not shown in the segmentation. Velocity vectors are shown as white pencils with the size proportional to the speed. Flow from the hepatic vein wraps around flow from the inferior vena cava and is joined by flow from the superior vena cava in a circular motion prescribed by the walls of the atrium. However, this patient has a significant tricuspid valve regurgitant jet, which increases mixing in the atrium. The regurgitant jet also contributes significant vorticity during systole, as is shown by the colored vectors. The only other significant vorticity at this point in early systole is generated on the walls at the top of the inferior vena cava. Throughout the rest of systole, this regurgitant jet drives recirculating flow in the atrium. During the first part of diastole, E-wave, there is little vorticity in the atrium. Next, we lower the threshold for velocity so that smaller velocity vectors can be seen. Note the flow corkscrewing into the ventricle, although there's very little vorticity in the center of this flow. Atrial contraction brings much stronger flow and vorticity. In particular, note the strong regurgitant flow back down the inferior vena cava. This flow also generates high vorticity at the crista terminalis. Next, we will focus on flow and vorticity in the ventricle. Here in early systole, flow in the ventricle consists of motion into the regurgitant tricuspid jet and flow into the main pulmonary artery. We have included a preliminary segmentation of the papillary muscles, which are somewhat hypertrophied in this PH patient. At the end of systole, during isovolumetric relaxation, we see evidence of pulmonary valve regurgitation, but little other flow in the ventricle. In early diastole, we have flow coming up the IVC, corkscrewing through the right atrium into the right ventricle. Now we delete the atrial flow for clarity. Note the ring of vorticity surrounding the tricuspid flow. Note also the lack of flow recirculating outside this layer of vorticity. 
This leads us to believe that this vorticity layer is wall-bounded on the surface of the tricuspid leaflets and is probably not part of a freely propagating vortex ring. Note the position of the papillary muscles, which supports this. However, accurate segmentation of the leaflets will be needed before conclusions can be drawn. Moving forward in time, the interaction of the papillary muscles with the flow and the vorticity layer can be seen. As the E-wave continues, recirculating flow appears to be limited to the region between the anterior and posterior papillary muscles. Pulmonary valve regurgitation continues to drive vorticity and recirculation throughout diastole. At peak diastole, some recirculation behind the septal wall leaflet can be seen. During A wave, recirculation between the anterior and posterior leaflet strengthens, and some recirculation can be seen around the middle of the anterior leaflet as well.